How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the System Tab 1, System Tab 2, the Types tab, and the Terms tab. So let's jump right into this. On the System Tab 1, which you can find by clicking on this little cogwheel here called the Database, and going to this tab right here, System 1, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. Starting off, you have the game title. This will be what the name of the game is. So it's perfectly okay to name your game Project 1 or Project 2 and then change it later on. And you can do that right there. The next thing we see is the starting party. You can double click to add a new party member to the starting party, like so. You can add as many starting party members as you like and you can take them out just by pressing the delete or right clicking and clicking delete. You can start with no party members. One important thing to note about the starting party actor selector thing here is that if you have an actor that has an invisible name, let's take actor number 29 for example, it can still populate the list with an actor if he's got a face character sprite and no name. So be careful when you're adding those for example if i click right here it shows that there's a character there 29 but you can't really see it that well right so if i added 30 and 29 we would have two characters in the party but you wouldn't notice at all so to start off if you're not sure just click on the top one and press delete 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 and then that'll get rid of all of the invisible actors that you have if you had that issue the next thing is what you want your currency to be called. I'm just calling it silvers, but you can call it gold pieces, GP, G, Zen, Yenis, whatever you want to call it, right? The next thing is window color, and you can change that by double clicking and then just sliding these sliders to change the window color to be whatever color you want it to be. The next is vehicle images, and you must have vehicle images, so they come with some default ones. If you don't want to use default ones, you'll have to replace them with some other ones. You can change which ones are used by double clicking on the cell and selecting a different one. If you want your boat to look like this, well, there we got that boat. Underneath that, we have the starting positions for the player boat, ship, and airship. The boat, ship, and airship have no starting positions, but if you give them one, then they will have one, obviously. There's no removing it after it's been added, and even though it shows none, they have to be here because there's some invisible map or something. They are actually checking these sprites before the game loads so if you think you are not going to use the boat ship and airship you still shouldn't remove the art out of the game it needs to have some placeholder for them even if you don't use them to change the starting positions of these things you just simply click on the three dots for each bar for this one we clicked on player and if we select on a map on the left hand side and then we click on this then it will change the party's starting position the same thing for the boat, the ship, and the airship. Next is the title screen. This is going to be the background art that you see on the title screen. When you open the title screen, what do you want it to look like? And you can change it to be whatever you want. And you have the option to draw the game title. Well, why would you want? Why would you need this option? Sometimes the image that you want to use already has the title of your game on it in a fancier text. So quite often in a more advanced game, you're going to not have the draw game title. Instead, you're going to put the game title on your art itself. Under that is the command window, and this is a new feature to MZ. This lets you change where the command window starts at. The command window we're talking about is the new game, continue, options, that thing right there. You can change it to window dim or transparent, just like show text, and you can offset it as well. Offsetting the X in a positive manner will have the box move to the right. Offsetting the X by making it a negative number will cause it to move to the left. Offsetting the Y to a positive number will cause it to move down, and offsetting the Y by a negative number will cause it to move up. Under that, we have the battle screen selection. You can decide if you want a front view battle system or a side view battle system. It's up to you. Both of them have some flexibility included in them with MZ. This is new. We have the turn-based time progress active or time progress wait systems for both the front view and the side view. And it's up to you to decide if you want to use the new time progress battle system or not. There's also some other ones you can choose from. Some plugins are coming out. I personally like side view with the time progress weight. Underneath that, we have several different options, and these are cool that we have. We have start in transparent mode, and if this is checked, then the player will be invisible from the beginning. In order to get them to become visible again, you have to change their transparency. In order to adjust their transparency, you go to page two under character, 
you can see change transparency. So you turn the transparency off to make them visible. So you can do this in any event, whenever you want to do it, however you want to do the, the flow control. If you want the players to be visible from the start and not go invisible, then you would just leave this unchecked. This next one allows you to hide the other party members in your party and just show the party leader. And you can shuffle your party around in most games. Simple. If you have it checked, it'll show the followers behind the leader. And if you have it unchecked, then it will only show the party leader. This next box is death by slip damage. And what this means is a slip damage is stuff like poison or like bleeding or stuff like that. And if your HP were to drop to zero, uh, it would kill you. But if you have death by slip damage unchecked, then the slip damage like poison will only take you to one. Death by floor damage is the same thing, except it's not poison. It's like if you're walking on lava uh, or you're walking on a spike trap then you can allow the player to die from that damage or just be taken down to one HP. It's up to you. The next one is display the TP in the window. This was a requested function. If you don't want to use the additional resource of TP, you can just turn it off right here now. That's pretty cool. The next one is experience for reserve members, and it basically means if you have more than four party members in your party or a full party in battle, do you want the people who didn't participate in the battle but they're still in your party to gain experience? If you want your backup crew to get experience, then you're going to check this as well. This means, for example, let's say you have 10 actors, but only four of them can participate in combat. You select the four that you want to use, but you want all of them to level up at the same time. That way they don't fall behind. In this case, you would check the experience for reserve members. This next one is going to show a number next to key items or not. Quite often, you'll have a key item and it's just like a single key item. Quite often, key items are singular items instead of stackable items. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to say one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that. You've got one pendant of the ancients. You can just say you've got the pendant of the ancients and you can check that right there. If you want it to show the number, you check it. And if you don't, you turn it off. The next one is a new thing to MZ as well. It's called Enable Autosave, and this is a very cool feature. It allows the game to save whenever you do a transfer event or whenever you enter or exit combat, which is really cool. And I believe some plugins will let you manipulate the autosave further. Up in the top right, we have music. You can select the music. This is pretty self-explanatory. You select the music that you want to play for these times when the title screen is playing. You can select the volume, pitch, and pan, and the, of course the track. You can select your battle music, your victory music, your defeat music, game over, all this, all of the musics right there. Underneath the music, you select the sound effects you want. I really recommend you guys come in here and mess with your sound effects. That way you can dial them in and not have it sound like every other game. Even a simple changing the pitch on some of these will make it sound a little bit different. And that's it for the system tab one. Let's look at system tab two. We have quite a few options here. This is a new thing to MZ. We haven't had two system tabs. We have a system tab two now, which is cool. Menu commands, we have the option to disable or enable different types of menu commands so that the player can not save by default here or not check their status or not look at their skills or not look at their equipments or not look at their formation or not look at any of it. Whatever you want. Item categories, you can split up your basic items into different subcategories, items, weapons, armors, and key items, and you can toggle them off or on. If you want your weapons and armors to not be shown in this menu and you have a custom menu, you can just turn it off right here, etc. And then you have SV magic skills. This is going to determine which skills are going to require the magic charging animation. When you use a magic skill that would be classified as magic, you can see the hit type, certain, or magic. So here is where you select which types of skills that you want to display magic charge up animation beforehand. The next is your SV animation motions. And you can adjust this in your IMG system folder if you want to change these. Game, open folder, IMG, system. They will be under here under weapons one. We have a correspondence to bare hands, meaning not showing any weapon animation. And then you have dagger, which would be here. And then it systematically goes down through here. A little trick you can do is if you wanted to, say, take out the daggers in your game and instead make like lightsabers or something, you could just instead, if you don't want to use a plugin, there are plugins that'll do this as well, but you can just replace this file. 
you can just edit this file so that instead of showing a dagger, it shows a lightsaber right here. And then even though it'll say dagger, you will know that this is your lightsaber. You can remember, hopefully. And then you can have the lightsaber. There are also plugins that will change these graphics, but basically let's go over it. The first thing is the type, then you have motion and you have the image for that. The type is the actual name of it. The motion is the type of animation that you want it to display. A thrust will be a forward thrust, a swing will go overhead, and a missile will cause them to draw the weapon but not actually move. And then the image is what it looks like. So you can select what image you want for each thing. So you can see this is dagger and it's using the dagger image. If you were to replace that dagger image with a lightsaber, then you would still reference it as the dagger here because you use the default. Otherwise you'd use a plugin and just overwrite it anyway. There are only so many slots on on this file so you are limited to this many here you are limited to the number of slots you have on that file shown here as 12 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so you can change those up if you want but that's all the spots you get so if you want to add the lightsaber you're gonna have to take one of these out or you're gonna have to use a plugin the next is the advanced settings. This is cool. This is your game ID thing that stores a number that says your game has an ID. I don't really know how this is going to be used too much, but it is an identifier for your project itself. Then you can change the screen width and height without a plugin. This is really cool. You can also change the user interface area. The user interface area will be the boxes that show when you like open the menu or when you are shown choices or when you show text. Typically you're gonna have it match the screen. That way it'll be the same and it will maximize the use. But I can give you an example of how it would look without maximizing it. What you could do if you wanted a smaller user interface. Let's just go with like 1106 and now our user interface will be slightly smaller than the game screen so our show text and all of our menus will not be fully stretched out to the whole thing let's actually look at that real quick right you see the show text is not all going all the way to the top or across the screen and even in combat the show ui will change the space you have in combat if we were to set our ui to the same as our screen's game resolution then this would stretch out all the way to the bottom but since we've reduced the ui resolution it draws a small image on top of it if you want to mess around with it maybe have slightly less things drawn and more real estate open for the player to view a lot of 3d games try to minimize their UI but I personally like maximizing it here that's just my opinion if you wanted to just maximize it set the UI resolution to the same as your screen resolution then you can change your fonts you can just double click and change the fonts put these in the right folder if you do change your fonts you're gonna to go to game open folder and then inside your games folder you'll see a folder called fonts and that will have to be in here so make sure you double click it, install it, include it with your game when you deploy it so that it knows to look for it. And then you have some fallback fonts in case these fonts are unable to be drawn on the screen that they're being ran on. You have fallbacks that are kind of like on almost all computers. You're going to have Sans and you're going to have Veranda and Times New Roman, etc. So you'll have these fallbacks here. The font size you can change. Moving on to the types. We've looked at the types a little bit in the past, but let's go over them in a little more detail. We have element types that you can define skills to be as. For example, you make a fire skill, you can click over here and say it does HP damage of the fire element. And you can reference that element against an enemy by saying this enemy's element rate is fire times 200%. So now this guy will take double damage from fire. As you can see at the top, I have a little bit of code before the word physical. This is going to show the icon number 307 in your icon set, which you can find in your IMG system folder. If you were to put that in front of your elements, it will show a picture. It will show that icon. So it's a little bit of flavor on the status menu. Moving on to the next thing, we have skill types. You can add as many skill types as you want. You can make like an enemy skills type or magic, tech, or whatever you want. You can see I've got focus, rage, chivalry, sorcery. When I make a new class, I typically want to give them some kind of unique skill type, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Then you have weapon types. Whatever weapon types you put in here, you're going to see that on the weapons when you select the weapon type. So if you add a new one, it will populate this list here. So if you make a new weapon called the Banjo Waza Kazoo, then you can select it down here. 
if you add it first. You may need to change maximum if you want to do that. Then we have the armor types. Same story here, except you'll be on the armors tab and you'll see armor type and it'll populate this list. And why why would you need this? Well, maybe you don't want your wizards wearing plate mail. You can set you know the plate mail to be heavy armor and then not allow that actor or class to equip that. You can seal off equipment types entirely. Locking and sealing are specific to the slot itself, not exactly the type. If you wanted to lock a type you just don't give the actor or class the ability to use it in the first place and then they won't be able to use it. They can only use a type if they have been given the equip armor or equip weapon type. For example, if you want them to wear heavy armor, you have to go equip armor and then put in the heavy armor inside the actor or, or the class. This is the armor types, weapon types, but then equipment types are slightly different from these two. These, the weapon types and armor types define like specific kinds of weapons and armors, while the equipment types are specifically saying what slots they are in. A body armor, which could be a light armor, but you can also have a body armor that could be general or a body armor that could be heavy. You can have like mages robes with magic armor, or you can have plate mail with heavy armor. And if you don't want them to wear armor at all, you could go back into that setting and on a class or on an actor and lock it completely under the equip tab so you can seal it off which means they will not be able to use body armor if i did seal or i can lock it which means they can use it but if they are currently not using it they won't be able to put one on and they can use it but if they are currently wearing it they are unable to take it off so that's what that would mean and then moving on to terms. Terms, it looks like a whole lot, but really it's just like, well, what do you want to call it? What do you want to call it when you refer to level? What do you want the abbreviation for level to be? What do you want it to look like when some HP changes in the game? What is the abbreviation for HP? What about MP, TP, experience? What do you want your first parameter to be called? Second parameter, third parameter? What do you want these things to be named? And it's really just whatever you want to name it. Uh, and it's pretty simple. Say you don't want to use attack, defense, magic attack, magic defense, agility, charisma, all that stuff. You want to use like strength and vitality and cunning and and finesse or whatever. You can totally do that. You can just replace attack with strength. Now, keep in mind, you're still going to refer to this as A.ATK or B.ATK. You're going to refer to it with the same names. You don't create your own .str or anything like that. You still have to refer to your quote unquote strength as your attack power but in the game when they're looking at it it won't say attack it'll just say strength hopefully that makes sense for you if you are unsure do you want it to say fight or attack do you want it to escape you want it to say run instead guard can be like defend or whatever you want it to be items could be bag skills could be uh techniques equipment could be gear you know you can rename these to be whatever you want them to be. You can rename status to just base stats or something. Really, all of this is for you to personalize the way that the game refers to things. So when you open up uh, the menu or you're in combat, say you're in first person combat, specifically, all of this stuff right here is, is mainly for first person combat. Traditionally, um, there's a lot of text in combat when you're referring to RPG Maker, first person. A lot of uh, the history has been first person and there's it's very text heavy. So you can change the way that the game refers to things by changing the terms in this tab right here. And the percentages will reference the target. So if you see percent one, it's going to refer to who emerged. Percent one means the target. Who got the upper hand? Who was surprised? Right? So the percent one means the target. These numbers, the percent ones and percent twos and percent threes, they're going to change depending on what is going on in the game. So for example, substitute you would say percent one protected percent two so it in this case they're both characters they're both going to be actors or it might be an enemy blocking another enemy so to say the first enemy protected that second enemy when they have the substitute flag go off it's all a case by case basis and you can change it so that it doesn't in include the names if you want to but you can also refer to those names if the data points exist and that's it. We've gone through the entire database. We've gone through all of the tabs. Hopefully you found these tutorials helpful. Please give these videos a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching. Big shout out to Dejica for sponsoring these videos. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.